the Seattle Mariners' missing piece. Let's talk about it. So we are officially 50 games into this season, and the Seattle Mariners are still in first place in the AL West, where they have a three-game lead on the Texas Rangers. But I can't seem to get over the fact that the Mariners still have a missing piece, and while a lot of people may think it's the bullpen, you know, it's the offense, there's just one specific player I'm going to hone in on again, because it's just extremely frustrating, especially one-thirds of the way through the season. And that is our franchise player in Julio Rodriguez, who is still struggling to put balls out of the park and really just drive in a lot of runs. So in this video, I kind of want to compare him to some other stars among other teams and kind of just also compare his 2023 stats 50 games into the year as well as his 2024 stats as of right now. And again, I want to preface this by not saying that I am not hating on Julio. I'm really just stating the facts at this point. And then we are a third through the year. So there really isn't, you know, it's too early or this, that, and the other thing. He is starting to figure out a little bit how to get the ball in the air. But again, this is our superstar player. We really shouldn't be settling for him hitting the ball in the air hard. He is currently on pace to have six home runs this year because he only has two as of right now. And a lot of other Mariners are beating him in that category. And I believe he is also struggling in terms of comparing him him to other guys with runs batted in. So first, let's go over his statistics from last year, 50 games into this year. So last season at this point, Julio Rodriguez had a much lower batting average where he was only hitting 238, which this season he's hitting 263. So there is definitely an improvement on the average side. But the one thing that sticks out the most is his number of hits. So last year he had 49 hits at this point in the season. This year he has 52. But the biggest difference is in his slugging in which 49 of those hits he had last season, 12 were doubles, one one was a triple and eight were home runs. So that's 21 extra base hits. While this year he only has seven extra base hits, which is five doubles and two home runs. He only has 14 RBIs, which is just about half of what he had last year, where he had 27 at this point in the season. His strikeouts are basically the same with 62 last year and 60 this year, but his OPS is down. His slugging is down. His on base percentage is actually up and his batting average is up. So he definitely is still producing in terms of actually getting hits, but he is really lacking in terms of his power production. And that's one thing I've been discussing over on Twitter is we did not sign Julio Rodriguez to be our franchise player for him to hit singles. And that's just the plain facts of the situation. That is not the name of today's game in terms of high average and just singles or doubles. Because as we know, someone like Luisa Rice, who is a fantastic baseball player, he is not a franchise player anywhere. He's been on a few teams over the course of his years in the league, which is not surprising because he doesn't drive in a lot of runs and he doesn't hit for a lot of power. Now, don't get me wrong. I think every single team should have a Luisa Rice because it is very productive to have a guy that just gets on base all the time, whether it's single, double, walk, whatever it may be. But we did not sign Julio to be that guy. We signed him to be the guy that hits home runs, drives in RBIs, hits for high average, and he is hitting for high average, but really just lacking the power this year. Do I still think there's time for Julio to get on an absolute home run tear? I do, and I do think he will probably end the season with over 20 home runs if he's lucky at this rate, but I do think it is definitely possible. Julio's a hard worker, and he is definitely still the face of our franchise, and I just hope he turns it around at some point because, again, I'm not hating on him. I'm just stating the pure facts of the situation. While it is awesome to see Luke Rayleigh Dylan Moore, Josh Rojas all be on fire this year. They cannot be the guys to anchor this team because that is really just not sustainable in the long run. While they could be very consistent players throughout this whole season, it is really not sustainable. Nobody going into this year said, oh, Dylan Moore, Luke Rayleigh, Josh Rojas, they'll be the stars of this team. Nobody expected that. And again, I'm not surprised because they are also good baseball players, but they are not the stars of this team. And again, not hitting on them either. It is awesome that they are doing what they are doing, especially Luke Rayleigh, because I said, if you give him his reps, he will do good, which he is proving. But the Seattle Mariners have been this successful so far throughout the season against the really difficult schedule without their superstar playing like a superstar in Julio Rodriguez. So what I decided to do is compare Julio's stats to other stars amongst other teams that are similar to the Mariners, don't have a super high payroll, but will be competitive and have a good team in terms of superstars. So those three teams I want to focus on right now are the Kansas City Royals, Baltimore Orioles, and the Cincinnati Reds. While the Reds are struggling, they do have a young superstar themselves in Ellie De La Cruz. While the Royals and Orioles do have stacked lineups throughout, there are two guys that are considered their superstars. So let's get right into the comparisons. So first we're going to compare Julio Rodriguez to Bobby Witt Jr. And as you can see by the head to head, Bobby Witt is beating Julio in every single category, war, games, plate appearances, hits, home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, batting average, on base percentage, slugging, and OPS. And to be honest, it's really not even close if you look at some of these categories. He has more than triple the home runs, double the RBIs, 
close to almost double the stolen bases. So Bobby Witt Jr. is obviously a freak athlete and he will always be good, which is why the Royals signed him long term, but to be the face of their franchise, just like we did with Julio not too long ago. But moving on to our next comparison, and you could arguably say the Orioles have Gunnar Henderson and Adley Rushman as their two stars, but I decided to focus on Adley for this video. As you can see by the head to head, Adley is beating him in every single important category except games, plate appearances, and stolen bases where Julio wins. But again, those really aren't important categories to win in. Adley has double the war, three more hits, almost five times the number of home runs, double the RBIs, and he's beating him in batting average on base percentage, slugging, and OPS. And again, it's by a lot. And last but not least, which is a team that is struggling so far this season, they did go off to a decent start, but now they are struggling. And that is the Cincinnati Reds star, Ellie De La Cruz, in which, as you can see by the chart, Ellie has more than a double war than Julio, and Julio's only beating him in games played, plate appearances, hits, and batting average, but Ellie's not too far behind in terms of batting average, but he almost has five times more home runs. He has nine more ribbies. He has 21 more stolen bases, which I'm not even going to fault Julio for that. Ellie is an absolute speed, but he's beating him in on base percentage, his slugging, his OPS and his OPS plus, which again, Julio is losing in these categories by a lot. So the point of this video isn't to say that Julio Rodriguez is a horrible player, blah, blah, blah. He will continue to be the face of our franchise and he will figure it out at some point. But right now, in terms of the video, the Mariners have a missing piece, and that missing piece is a superstar. Again, the Seattle Mariners have been very competitive, and that is due to high production from guys like Dylan Moore, Luke Rayley, Josh Rojas, and some other guys across the board. But right now, they are doing this without a superstar, when a lot of teams who are winning right now have some superstar. As we know, the Yankees have Aaron Judge, Juan Soto, but the Mariners are still competing and beating them. And that is with credit to the pitching staff as well, but the Mariners are just missing that piece in terms of the superstar that can really set them over the edge and really just completely anchor this offense to wins. Again, some of you might get mad at me for just pointing out the facts in this situation, and I'm not hating on Julio. I love Julio. He's a great guy. He just seems like he loves playing the game, and I'm happy he's the face of our franchise. Just genuinely facts he needs to be the superstar this season especially if you want to make a deep run into the playoffs good teams don't do that good without their superstars playing to that caliber that they know they can play at and julio can play with the best of them in this game just right now he is struggling to do that so please let me know your guys thoughts on the julio situation and if he will turn around at some point i'm a believer that he will but i'd rather him do it sooner rather than later but otherwise i hope you guys did enjoy the video and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out